The Veils are about to release a new album, and Out of the Void Came Love is their first record since 2016. Frontman Finn Andrews has since released a solo album. I caught up with Finn, who was in Auckland, and asked him if this new record picks up where The Veils left off. Well, I went down to the water and the ferryman said, we are forever entwined at the partition between the living and the dead. I mean, it's definitely more a continuation of the, the veils. There was right. a little bit of um, indecision in the beginning on my part of which of the two sort of uh, banners it would appear under. Um, yep. So that's sort of confusing at the best of times. But I think this <laughs> was um, certainly a veils album and um, had all the, the hallmarks of what I... Uh, considered to be a Vales album, though please don't ask me what they what those are. But it just felt, okay. I'll try not to. <laughs> but like it felt like that's where it belonged. Um, yeah. Yeah. So when you're writing a song, do you think of it in in those terms, or is it just a song and then you kind of deal with it later as to where to put yeah, it? Yeah, no, you very much deal with it later. Yeah, I um, <laughs> I'm not very good at uh, thinking about anything. Um, I mean, really, I kind of wish I'd just made I kind of wish I'd made no albums that I'd just written songs and then after I died or like before, surely before I died you know I wrote like a track listing of everything that might have allowed me to have had like enough time to think about what I'd like to put out but really like it takes right. me so long to make any sense of any of the songs um had I known had I been sort of independently wealthy or something that would have been great and then I could have just um, yeah, you know, <laughs> left it there. I <laughs> had another profession, maybe. Then I could have just done this on the side, and then at the end, right. you just released this this one thing. But unfortunately, I've ruined it by um, putting out oh, six albums already. Having the having to eat and pay the rent, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Man, I, yeah. I hate when that happens. Yeah, it's a real <laughs> shame. Or and I didn't think of it earlier. I think if I thought about it earlier, maybe I would have just you know just done that. But um, anyway, right. Okay. So when did uh, proper work start on this record? Was it during the, still at the time that the solo album was in the works or did you just get that out and then start it on this? Yeah, it was sort of more like that. I've, I've been writing, I write a lot of stuff that, that just, it's all sitting around waiting for, for me to make some kind of sense of it and put it, put it out in some form. So was, uh, some of these songs were, were around, before the solo record um but yeah it was sort of when i came back from touring the solo record and i'd broken my wrist and i was sort of just in oh, yeah. indoors for ages um yeah that's when it really started up and uh but yeah i didn't know what it would be yet i just was just writing really in the in the kind of everyday way that i do right right and not to put too much on it, but the, the breaking of the wrist, how much does that, how did that affect you in what we hear at all or anything? Or is it just, did it just give you time or something to think about? It, yeah, it did really affect me actually. It was a weird, um, I'd never had uh, anything. Well, that time, like I was definitely having a bit of a crisis of faith in my own, abilities around that time and whether this was really what I wanted to still be doing uh with my with my time um mm -hmm. I think after that solo album like the the record company made me delay that release by I think it was about a year and a half like they they, did, they shelved it for a year and a half before they put it out which I found this like interminably long slog right. and it came out and by the time it was out, I was just like, you know, so ready to move on to the next thing. Um, and just that, that sort of stuff really. And then it was, you know, trying to make another album and I had to find all the money to make that. And it's just sometimes, you know, you do feel like you're back at the bottom of the hill again with the, with the boulder. And um, have I got the energy to push another, <laughs> another right, album right. out, you know, another boulder up the hill. And so I was really questioning that around then. And then I, it broke my wrist. And so it did really feel like this kind of, um, I think having the thing taken away from me was a, a good way to uh, very quickly sort of snap out of that kind of self-pity cycle and kind of go, I like, know oh, I actually like, you know, I really need this as much as ever. Right. 
Um, right, right. What else would you do? What you else really would I do, Marty? Yeah, it's a good. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean it quite that way, but <laughs> no, that's true though. Well, and actually though, yeah, of um, I think it's also the last few years have it's been the first time I've my horizons have sort of broadened at all. I am sort of try I have been trying out some other things and um, obviously sort of becoming a dad. That was suddenly this right. like, other thing, other major thing to think about in my life when I've only yep, really yep. ever had songs. Um, so yeah, there's been a few, I've found a little more purpose in other areas as well, which has been good for me, I think. Right. Mm. And it starts out the whole album with the song called Time, which is a fairly profound, major kind of thought process to <laughs> yeah. kick it off with. So why is it there and why did you write that? <laughs> yeah. Time is a devil. Time is a rock Time is a riddle None of us can unlock Yeah, well, I, th I think that song was very much... That very much came out of that period I'm talking about. Um, yeah. Uh, and, the, you know, it, it then sort of bled into the kind of first lockdowns and things as well where everything just everything felt time it felt very uh nebulous and um kind of silly actually i just remember sort of everything uh i don't know you just it, all of these things that felt very serious and sort of locked in and suddenly everything just seemed kind of uh ridiculous or something it did to me anyway I mean, it just seemed sort of comically made up and mad um <laughs> so that song is sort of a kind of a kind of thinking about that, I guess, just this sort of like dressing up, dressing up the idea of time in these different sort of clothes and um, trying to sort of trying to look at it, I suppose, look at this thing that is just obviously very hard to, to ever really look at. Um, right. Yeah. So that's uh, that came out of that that period. Gotcha. Sure. And, and sonically, one of the first things we hear is the sound of the strings. Mm. And you've got Victoria Kelly working with you yeah. on that. So tell me how that worked. How, what did you talk to her about? How did she, you know, was there was it back and forth? Did you just give her the songs and say, do what you do your thing? How did it work? Yeah, I mean, she, Vic's been one of the people I've just like treasured meeting so much in this time since I've moved back to New Zealand that really like without her. Her and Tom Healy really are just these like two people who just sort of transformed my um, creative life. Really, I just I've never uh -huh. felt so um, uh, so at ease collaborating with someone, and it's like it's just been so like um, I don't know. I, she was such a gift to meet. I met her right right before we we did the solo album, and I was sort of. We made that album in a bit of a hurry and I was just sort of, I'd just come back to New Zealand and I was trying to find all the people and someone recommended her to me and we sort of went out and um, uh, right. got rip-roaringly pissed and uh, just had this fantastic <laughs> night talking about music and things and um, and it, I, I think I didn't quite realise in the beginning quite what a genius she was. It sort of like dawned on me as the arrangements started sort of coming in and you just sort of like, oh, okay, right. It's like... Uh -huh. um, Quite how lucky I was to have it dawned on me quite how lucky I was to have found her really and then so again with this one it's just I I sent her the demos for these songs and she disappeared for a while she's been writing this requiem for like a couple right. of years which is on yep. pretty soon um and was one of the most sort of like brutal COVID related um like show cancellations where you know she'd been working on it for so long and then two days before it was meant to be performed. Right. It got pulled and it was just this thing, oh God, it's just, um, so I don't know, she, uh, it, it was well-timed because it was, she'd been working on the Requiem and then just as that, uh, she had a little bit of time, um, she, she was able to do um, this album. Um, and, you know, just made her presence felt probably even more so than on the solo record where they just really like, right. these songs just sort of blossomed um, in such a such an amazing way, I've really, I've never really felt that before. Sort of someone I've worked with, just like um, so they're just so effortlessly 
in terms of our like working relationships, so effortlessly improve on everything. It's always been a bit of a battle in the past with right. producers and things and sort of like, fuck off, I don't want to change the dramas or the right. oh, there's always a bit of a like <laughs> you know, sort of gotta fight it out. But I've never had such a right. like a calm like um calm and you know, beautiful friendship as well, I guess. But a, yeah, right. Well, I kind of believe you're almost answering my next question already because I see you recorded part of it, of the record around here at Roundhead, then up at the lab. So yeah. in general, how would you describe the, the mood and the vibe of the sessions and how, how you work together with everyone? Um, Victoria? Yeah, <laughs> well, it, was, it was super um, like sporadic. Um, so we never really had the opportunity to waste any time, which is rare. I've found often when you're not that you're wasting time in the studio, you know, if you go somewhere for like a month, there's usually quite a lot of dead time. So sort of sitting around, right. um, I don't know, this was, this is always, we'd have like a day or two days and we'd just be like, we'd be trying to record two or three songs, um, that day. So everything was really frantic, um, in a, in a cool way though. And I like felt really a lot of camaraderie and a lot of um right um yeah just felt really really productive and and i really like that way of working versus the sort of like oh god we're in here for ages and oh uh, i don't know it doesn't I, yeah. I just go a bit mad yeah. after like a week and i can't uh right so were you the person driving that were you the one saying okay we're going to do these two songs in a day and move yeah on from there? yeah i guess i was with with tom with tom and i would sort of dictate the the program, I guess, um, but with this band, they're like, it's just, everyone's so amazing and so fast and like, um, so they just, it was really easy to just sort of roll on to the next thing. It's like, we recorded maybe another, there was a brief period where I was flirting with the idea of this being a, a triple album. So there's like, there's Oh my God. <laughs> which I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad someone reined me back from that, but um, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that didn't make the cut in the end. So we were, uh, yeah, we were doing a lot every day in the studio. It was um, right, right. And I see you got Liam, Liam back in the, the fold, your old buddy. So mm. how did that come about? Obviously, you're here and he's here, so that makes sense. Yeah, totally. And we did we did that Nux Formica sort of um, tour last. Yeah. Year. So that was a that was sort of how it happened, I guess, for sort of bringing him back in for that because he played on that record and um, he's got a very successful art career now and that he's spending a lot of time on. So um, I right. wasn't sure if we'd um, the schedules would align, but he's been really up for coming back in in a more sort of full time way as well with with his other things. But um, yeah, and he did the artwork for the record, right? He did. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, yeah. Yeah. We're so lucky to have him doing that. Did you have a discussion about what you wanted or what do you wanted it to, how to represent the music? Yeah. We, oh, I mean, like everything with this album, it's been just like long <laughs> discussions and like maybe we spent maybe a year and a half on the artwork as ludicrous as that sounds, but really, with, with the <laughs> that's amazing. I mean, you know, <laughs> On and off, not every. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there's like we've been. T I've been talking about it. My friend Brendan um, Cleaver, who designed it, um, we've been sort of emailing about it for yeah for years. Um, uh, and so we landed on this sort of like this etching, um, which was which uh, yeah, we went through a lot of different like album titles and things as well. So there's been a lot of like back and forth um, right. so and we so we landed on this etching of a sort of enunciation this enunciation image um and then uh but we wanted to sort of corrupt it a little bit and um so we liked the idea of her sort of being this sort of visitation of kind of divine love and she's sort of um upon this visitation she's sort of collapsing into these kind of black hole. So sort of there she goes down, these sort of universes are kind of <laughs> being sort of expelled from her body. Yep. Um, yeah. But so that was the, that was basically the, that was the brief I gave to Liam. <laughs> and then he ran, ran off of that. <laughs> nice. That's what we ended up. Go for it. <laughs> Knock yourself out. Yeah. So there's 15 tracks on the record. Um, mm. 
even just uh, making a track list and sorting it out, was that a major effort for you? Was there something you had in mind? You wanted to go from one place to another to another? Yeah, yep, that took ages. Every, yep, went <laughs> round and round that for a long time. The label had a few suggestions at the end, which were quite good, I think, and it got tweaked again. I was quite open for to, as I say, like I, I'm the first person to, to unfortunately, uh, lose all um, perspective because I'm just around this for so long. Right. It's really great to have other people, even if, you know, you don't listen to everyone, it's good to have a bit of input at the end because I just start going a bit, um, getting a bit lost. Uh, yep. So I had a pretty clear idea, but then we did a few little changes at the end, which I think helped it flow nicely. And um, I guess we had this sort of concept of like, the kind, we were flirting with, you know, that kind of Tom Waits, Blood Money, Alice thing of like maybe two different albums on the same day. Right, right, right. Yep. Um, but then kind of landed on this, it's kind of a double album. It's kind of two albums conjoined thing, which I really liked and felt like we, we sell more vinyl than anything else. So it, it felt like... Um, it suited that as well. It sort of suited uh, being listened to in that way. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's skip over to the second uh, LP then. And uh, mm. maybe we can touch on one of the songs there. Uh, the Day I Met or I Met Meet My Murderer is an mm. interesting title nonetheless. Uh, and it's kind of, um, well, it's got the strings in it. Is it in three quarter time? I'm not a musician, but it seems like it was kind of like. Kind of yeah, it's got that sort of swing. Like that. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and, and a beatbox behind it somewhere. Yeah, a little drum machine. Yeah, crusty old. Um, I think it's those like, like those little drum machines that used to be in sort of organs. Um, right. I really like that little plinky plonky sound. Um. Yeah, yeah. Strange little song. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's all I'm gonna get for you. And the nice little guitar in the intro. Who's playing that? Uh. I think that's me. Yeah, I okay. uh, I got this guitar. A lot of the album was written around this guitar. I got a little. I was actually on that solo tour. Um, we were sort of taken to this guitar brothel. It really it had a brothel vibe, but it was a guitar shop. Right. It's sort of on the side of this like motorway in the Netherlands somewhere. It was this old sort of like manor house. And every single floor is like a different era of guitars. And right. you go in and there's this kind of guy who sort of takes you in and right this way, sir. And you get the sort of, um, you know, you get taken to the bar and you can have whatever you like. And you sort of taken up to the various floors. Um, and I, yeah, I just found this like the, the most beautiful guitar I've ever seen in my life. And it was carved out of a... Um, a, a, like a rosewood church door and the back of it smells like uh, like frankincense like it's wild it smells like it smells like a church the whole um guitar and i was, I was like, okay well this has to i unfortunately now have to find the money to to buy this thing so i managed to make <laughs> it work and um but so many of these songs came out of it and i know when you fall in love with these instruments it's for a reason and right. uh, i immediately wrote um Made from love with Fight to Go and uh, the Pearl and um, the Day I Meet My Murderer and yeah, it was nice to um, indulge uh, myself in that sort of style of playing as well. That kind of um, right, yeah, that was great. So when you when you go on the road, will you take that guitar with you, or do you prefer to leave it safely at home? Yeah, I have to unfortunately have to now buy a, a crap version of it that I can take on the road because otherwise. I'd be, <laughs> I'd be too afraid that I'd uh, fall, either fall on it or, or get necked out the back of a van or something. Um, right. I'm now. It's a little. It's a little. It's only been topped now by having a child. But that sort of fear of like when you have something so beautiful yep. that you uh, are now Fragile. now you're just terrified you're going to lose it. And um, yeah. so now I've now I've got it. My my beautiful daughter and uh, and this guitar that I have to worry about for the rest of my life. <laughs> Yes, indeed. <laughs> so you mentioned at the beginning of our conversation that, you know, you've been working on this for a long time. You're happy that it's out now. So mm -hmm. mentally, are you kind of thinking about the next step since that kind of happened a while ago and you're just getting it out? Yeah, um, I am. I, 
I think this is why the, the, the weight is always so interminable because you're sort of in this limbo that's right. really hard to actually take yourself seriously with anything else that you write because you sort of you feel like I've spent six years on something and it still <laughs> hasn't come out and now you're writing something else. You're just like, this is mad. Only a mad person would would live like this. So it's hard <laughs> until it's come out. I can't really take myself seriously as a songwriter, like, or uh, you just sort of like, oh, good, write some more songs that you can sit around, you know, not right. putting out. Fantastic. Um, so no, I, I had a few ideas, but um, this is this is kind of always the worst part of being a musician. I think is this this period where you're just like in this holding pattern, waiting to. You've got nothing new out and you ha you're not on tour and you, you know, you, I just want the next bit to come along and um, right. I want to be out in the world again, doing what I love and um, doing about doing what I've been fantasizing uh, of doing again since the, you know, since I broke my wrist, really, was, you know, going on tour and going through Europe again, you know, going back to all of these countries and all these venues that we love so much. Um, will just feel so fucking great. I can't wait to can't wait to be doing that again. Yep. When's the when's your next gig? The first one is down in Christchurch, I think. Um, oh, cool. I don't know when that is, but in March, at the beginning of this this New Zealand tour. Right. Um, and then we head over to Europe in May and do um, do a whole summer tour over there, which will be yeah, should be great. Yeah. Hopefully it'll be summer there. We missed the summer here. So. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, it'll be, um, yeah. Though maybe it's still to come, Marty. We've still got a couple of. You months. never know. Kiwi summer. Fingers crossed. Yeah, we just might have moved it down a ways. Yeah. Uh, anyway. <laughs> yeah. All righty. Well, I'll let you go, and um, good luck on the release day. Got anything Thank you, special? Mate. Do you do anything when on the day of a release? Is there any kind of? No. No, I should really. Yeah, that'd be nice. I think it's time. We should. Um, we're going to might do a little listening party thing. I'll let you know if we do it. I know you've heard it already, but we sometimes yeah, it, do a little thing, have a little drink somewhere or something. That would be cool. Yep. Um, All right. Thanks, Marty. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much. Cool. Yep. Then <laughs> uh, keep on trucking. Thank you. See you soon, I'm sure. Bye. Yep.